Hi, welcome to the service of morning prayer at St. James Episcopal Church in Wheat Ridge on this, the seventh Sunday of Eastertide 2020. We're so happy that you're all here with us today. We look forward to the day that we can all worship together side by side. But in the meantime, here we all are in cyberspace. Now let me invite you all to join into an attitude of prayer as we prepare to worship this morning. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Now let's all join together in singing with Barb and Jim Banks, Blessed Jesus, at thy word. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wali. Alleluia! The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the words of the Passion Ostrom, Christ our Passover. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, 
he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Psalm 68 Today's psalm will be read responsibly by half verse. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows. God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him up out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him going to heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, 
a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the reading. Let us say together Canticle 20, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Wali. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Wali. Here ends the reading. Together, let us say Canticle D, a song of the wilderness. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The ransomed of God shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The third reading is a lesson from the Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, 
that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work, the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Here ends the reading. Holy Spirit, come. Give life to my words. Bless each of us present today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome to Memorial Day Weekend 2025. Here we are at the traditional start of summer. And I don't know about you, but I've certainly got a busy holiday weekend planned. I'm going to cookouts with friends later on. A bunch of us are going to go to the movies. The Rockies are in town, so I may take in a ball game. And, and of course, the church is packed. Rita and Shirley have a spectacular coffee hour planned for us later. I don't know how those two do it. They just don't ever seem to get old. Yeah, life is pretty much back to normal. In fact, in most ways, it's better than it used to be. Back before that awful pandemic of 2020 changed everything. At first, it was terrible. You remember it was just bad news on top of bad news. There was all that illness and death, followed by unemployment, bankruptcy, poverty. We weren't sure how we could endure it. But then, well, you remember. You remember what we did. That brings me back to Memorial Day, because we don't want to forget the most important thing about Memorial Day. Our national observance of Memorial Day dates back to 1868, when General John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, named May 30th as a special day to honor the graves of Union soldiers. General Logan's orders stated that the day was, quote, designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. It was also called Decoration Day. Maybe some of you remember it being referred to that way. Over time, we expanded the observance to include the remembrance of all those who sacrificed their lives in the service of our nation in any war. And then, since 9-11, we also began making significantly more mention of those who died in the line of duty in emergency services, including fire, police, first responders. And then in 2020, we began including all the health care providers who bravely went to work every day to care for those struggling with COVID-19 and the equally brave care providers in nursing homes and rehab facilities where the disease had just been brutal. Many of them paid with their lives and so today we honor them too. It's a debt we can never repay. Likewise, we owe a debt of gratitude to the grocery store clerks, the delivery people, the meat packing plant workers, all those whose jobs were deemed essential but who didn't have the luxury of working safely from home. They too are worthy of our admiration and our praise on this Memorial Day 2025. Their sacrifice was no less than the sacrifice of those who gave their lives on a battlefield. 
But you know, in a larger sense, all of us, every single person who was on this planet five years ago was locked in a very real battle. It was a battle that took so many lives. We may never know the actual toll because even now it's hard to know who died because they came down with COVID-19 or who died as a direct or indirect result of it. I guess we'll be sorting that out for years to come. But back in 2020, while people in some places were more at risk than others, there was no place that was really safe. We knew so little about the coronavirus then. There was no one on earth who could legitimately say, I don't have to worry about this. It affected all of us. I think that gives all the more poignancy to the words we heard this morning in the letter from Peter. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Now, at the time he wrote this letter, sometime before his death in about the year 65, St. Peter wasn't speaking about a public health crisis per se. Instead, he was speaking to a community of believers who had suddenly and unexpectedly found itself caught up in a wave of persecution at the hands of the Emperor Nero. You see, in the year 64, there had been a great fire that had destroyed much of Rome. Now, popular legend holds that Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Whether Nero did or didn't start the fire or respond appropriately to the crisis that came afterward is open to debate. But what we do know is that he needed a way to create a diversion, to deflect suspicion and criticism away from him. And the Christians were a handy scapegoat. Thus began the persecution that would continue off and on for the next 250 years, until another Roman emperor, Constantine, himself became a Christian, and the trajectory of Christianity was altered forever. But Peter was speaking to people who were suffering in ways they never imagined. They didn't know what to do, where to turn, or how to respond. Humble yourselves, Peter told them. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Be disciplined. Be alert. And remember that even though you're suffering now, this is an opportunity to share in Christ's suffering. And eventually, this is going to pass. Christ himself will restore, support, and strengthen you. Peter might as well have been speaking to us all back in 2020. Our world unexpectedly experienced a staggering level of death. Add to that the multitudes who lost their jobs, the children who lost critical time in the classroom, the billions of lives upended. For many people, it was the most difficult moment in their lives. And some crumbled in the face of so much suffering. Some started acting very foolishly, so focused on their own pain and loss that they gave no thought to the greater good. They just wanted their own suffering to end. And some gave in to despair. But others, others rose. They found strength and courage they never knew they had. They found they were willing and able to endure whatever sacrifice was asked of them in order to promote the common good. Dare I say it, I think it's what happened to most of us. I think that most of us held our own against that fiery ordeal, engaging in daily sacrificial acts to protect the world. Every time we put on a mask, hot and uncomfortable as it was, we joined Christ in his sacrifice. Every time we dug a little deeper in our pockets to help those in need, tipped the delivery person a little more generously, 
offered up a little bit more of our own resources to help those who'd been devastated, we joined with Christ in his sacrifice. Every time we humbled ourselves and sacrificed our own desires to serve the greater good, we joined with Christ in his sacrifice. And as we persevered in those dark times, we took our place in that long, glorious line of heroes that we honor this Memorial Day. Those who sacrificed themselves so that others would live, so that our nation and all the nations of the world could regain a sense of safety, a time of peace. So this Memorial Day 2025, we salute those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own, who stepped forward and did their duty when the need was greatest. The God of grace who has called us to his eternal glory has never stopped restoring, supporting, and strengthening us. Remember, remember how we did it together. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith as found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Wally. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Wombat, who's a happy little Vegemite, wants to say to you all, peace be with you and send you a big kiss he wants to visit you again. Stay safe. Bye. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Now let us continue with our prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us offer our prayers in the name of Jesus, who dwelt among us, died and rose again for our salvation, and ascended into the heavenly realm, responding, Hear us, ascended Lord. That we may place our lives in the sacred heart of Jesus, who claims us in his own and reveals his glory through our lives, let us pray. Hear us, ascended Lord, that our hands may feed the poor and tend the sick, that we may create a church where all are welcomed and where visitors are seen as blessings, and that we may ascend beyond the earthly hesitations to grasp the divine inspiration that is implanted within us. Let us pray. Hear us, Ascended Lord. For those who fear the discovery of secret sins and the private guilt 
that has many names, that they may have confidence in the priestly gift of reconciliation, the courage to admit their shortcomings, and the greater courage to accept God's tender forgiveness. Let us pray. Hear us, Ascended Lord. For an end to violence and abuse, and to all things that harm God's creation and rob humanity if of its inherent dignity, let us pray. Hear us, Ascended Lord. That Donald, our President, members of Congress, and those who sit on the Supreme Court may take seriously the authority invested in them, leaving part partisanship behind and exercising leadership that best responds to the people of our nation and world. Let us pray. Hear us, Ascended Lord. For those who have died and whom we commend to eternal life, remembering especially Luis Garcia, brother of Olga Davis, all those who have died while serving their country, the 323,000 people worldwide who have died in this pandemic, let us pray. Hear us, Ascended Lord. We pray for all affected by coronavirus in Colorado and throughout the world. We pray for the leaders of our states and of the nations that they may work together for the common good. We pray for those who are sick and those separated from loved ones. We pray for our healthcare workers, our first responders, and all those who put themselves in harm's way to provide care and needed services. We pray for scientists and researchers around the world as they combat the virus. Hear us, Ascended Lord. We pray for the homeless, for those in prison, and for all those who find it difficult to find shelter or safe space. We pray for those who have lost their jobs and are filled with worry about how they will pay their bills or feed their families. Grant your protection to the most vulnerable among us and fill those who minister to them with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, Ascended Lord. We pray for our loved ones who are in need of strength or healing, including Vernice, Suzanne, Kate, Vince, Mary, Lisa, Chris, Shirley and her son, Robbie, Mary, Ed and Tony, and Tom and Linda. We pray for those who are homebound, including Donna, Janice, Lenore, Betty, Maggie, Arlene, Hank and Olga, and Pat, and those we name before you now. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Wali. Help us, O God our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. O oh God, the King of glory, 
you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before us, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Wali. God, the King of glory, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant them your mercy and the light of your presence. Give us a sense of your will and purpose, that we may understand that the work you have begun in them will be perfected through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, in whom all strife is resolved. Amen. Wali. <clears throat> o God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Wali. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Wali. And now let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through the well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Wali. Now, once again, let's join with Barb and Jim as together we sing, Jesus shall reign where heir of the sun. Jesus shall reign where the sun doth his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no more. To him shall endless prayer be made and praises thong to crown his head. His name like sweet perfume shall rise with every morning sacrifice. People and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song. And infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Blessings abound wherever he reigns. The prisoners leap to lose their chains. The weary finding eternal rest, and all who suffer on are blessed. Let every creature rise and bring peculiar honors to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.